So uh, with that said, I am going to hand it over to Aaron. And then Aaron, just let me know when you want the overhead camera to be spotlight. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be joining you from my new space today. So excuse the kitchen view, please. Um, I'm here coming to you from the middle of a vineyard. Literally, I can throw an art supply and hit some grapes right now out my window. Um, so it's pretty ethically beautiful and uh, kind of the perfect inspiration for what we're going to be doing today, which is talking about this idea of urban sketching and capturing the environment around you. So if you don't happen to be living in the middle of a vineyard, that's fine. You don't have to have a beautiful setting right outside your window. Um, it's totally fine to think of an imaginary setting. Um, I also encouraged you to bring some supplies related to like architectural details maybe. Um, you can also pull up a photograph of a favorite place. Any of these things will work and we'll go through a bunch of different ways to think about this idea of capturing the environment around you, documenting it in some way that is about you. So one thing I really wanna make clear today is that this isn't about doing a perfect drawing of a scene, right? That's a different class. That's like a, a real architectural drawing class, which is a wonderful practice and a beautiful thing to do, but that's not what we're up to today. Today, what we're up to is really getting kind of the essence of what is it like to be where I am right now and um, explore and, and kind of uh, document that in some way, okay? So we can switch to the downward facing camera now. And I'm just gonna scoot my chair a tiny bit. Hopefully you can hear me all right. Okay. So I started with a little pre-sketch for this one. Um, and for this one, uh, forgive me if I tear up a little bit while we're working on it, because this is a, a sketch of one of my favorite things that is a change now that I'm living up here most of the time. So I did get to revisit this view this past weekend. Um, this is the place where I normally paddle. And these are two characters who I normally feed. So we have uh, one of the crows that I feed um, and then one of the seagulls that always is closely following the crow. So a suggestion that um, I find useful when I'm going to do a sketch of a scene, um, whether it's live sketching in person or whether it's sketching from a drawing, is to start really light. So to start with a colored pencil, you can see um, if you look closely, there's some green lines in here underneath the blue. And the green lines were just kind of getting in what is the general angle of this uh, wall that the two birds are standing on? What is the general shape and size of these two birds? The crow being closer, the seagull being a little further away. What is the architecture of the dock and the um, gangplank down to the dock in the background? And then what are generally the angles of this? So not getting too many details in that first one with the green colored pencil. And then I went in afterwards with turquoise and started kind of roughing in the details a little bit more, capturing um, the kind of disgruntled look on the face of the seagull. He was a little bit angry that the crow was getting the peanuts and he wasn't. So you can kind of see the look on his face. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was happy with the shape of him and kind of him lifting up his foot. You can see he's approaching. And the crow ended up looking, um, I think this is a little bit of um, anthropomorphizing on my part, but the crow looks very satisfied. The crow looks very happy with what's happened here. Okay, so that's step one and two to start capturing your scene. So if you're working on something at home from a photograph or maybe out the window that you're sitting near, um, go for those first two layers, you can pick any two colors. These are just the two that I happen to use um, to, to start to get that scene. And now from here, you have a decision. You can go with what are the naturally occurring colors that go with this scene? What is, what is actually there? Or you can look away entirely and just start to go with the things that feel right. Okay, so I know that just beyond this part where the rocks are is the water. So just going in, 
with a little bit of color. I'm using a wax crayon right now because I know I'm going to use some watercolor and other water-based media in a bit. And I want to create something that'll make some nice texture. And so for the rocks, they're a little bit mossy. So I'm just going to kind of make some mossy squiggles down here. It was medium to low tide on this day. So there was quite a lot of rock. This is also where the crows and the seagulls both like to hunt for crabs. I see them down there quite frequently jumping amongst the rocks. And I saw a baby gull this weekend catch a crab and then not know what to do with it. <laughs> and is on these rocks looking around like, oh no, now what do I do? This thing has big claws. What am I what am I supposed to do with this? And if you've ever heard of baby seagull, they're amongst the most complaining babies you've ever heard. Saddest little sound. I have my chaotic rocks at the edge of the water. And I'm going to mostly leave the rest of the background pretty light. Start to bring in a little bit of, a little bit more into the wall here. You can see I've lightened my touch quite a bit. So one of the things you can think about when you're doing this is how is it, how are the quality of my lines, the quality of the marks that I'm making also telling some of the story of what it's like to be here. How do I tap into maybe the emotions of being in a certain place? Maybe that's a favorite destination for your vacation, or maybe it's the view from your front porch. Maybe it's out of bedroom window, whatever that is for you. What does it feel like? to be there. And I'm thinking about like familiarity and comfort of routine. So for my seagull and my crow, I'm gonna go in with a little watercolor. I'm not gonna do a really dark wash, but I do want to make them kind of the main characters of this scene, which is why I'm switching materials now into using some watercolor. <laughs> yeah, Shelly, I see your comment. This is a, a brand new map that I put down for today. <laughs> the one on the studio desk has gotten pretty messy. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll make some good messes in this new space. It's just a matter of time, right? <laughs> you all have heard some of my, my disclaimers about bird feed before, but it's really, really important. It tells you a lot about what's going on with the bird if you look at their feet. Like how are they standing? What are they up to? And then my skull friend here. A pretty, pretty bright feet and pretty bright feet. And otherwise, a pretty, pretty white skull. I'm going to let some of that orange kind of shine up onto his little white feathers there. Bump it in a little bit. 
I have my two little bird characters there. And now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of other color into this water. So it's the bay. So it's not like a pure tropical blue water. Definitely got some darkness to it as well. And a little bit of green. And the thing that I like is that using wax to kind of do that place where the edge of the water meets the ground is you can have a little bit of your watercolor come up into that, right? Like your watercolor, watercolor. <laughs> and it can really help you capture that idea of uh, the water's edge, right? That it's not a straight line unless you're right at the edge of the beach. And so I'm just going to fade this here up to the top of the page with a lot of water. If I remember correctly, it was a little bit of a gray day this day. So go back and get a little bit of tiny bit of black paint. So I've said this to you all before, but uh, one of the things that I'm doing when I'm working on a page like this, where I'm kind of going back and forth between wet media and dry media, is I try to strategize my approach so that while I'm working on one area, another area is drying so that I can come back to it and continue. So I'm going to come in with a little bit more pigment for my program here. That first layer is dry, so now I can get a little more brush detail here. Yeah, so the comments about working fast. This is, I think, a good practice if you're, so think about the term that we're working with today, this idea of urban sketching, right, or um, sketching out in the world. Um, keyword being sketching, <laughs> not drawing, right? And so you can sit here and belabor and belabor and belabor and keep working on something, and very often, those a little more accurate to what the scene was actually like. So try to work fast if you can. And then try not to overwork. I'm going to let that sit for a bit and let my dark paint dry, add a little bit more very washed out black paint to the wall. And drop just a little bit. Shadows in between the rocks. So what I'm doing right now is just kind of playing. I, I really like to kind of go in when it's still a little wet, but dry enough that I get a little definition in the line.
And you might notice that I'm holding my paintbrush a little bit differently right now. Again, like just kind of loose, right? It's just kind of resting in my hand. This keeps you from getting too tight because this is the other thing about sketching. If you hold your tools just really forcefully, you're gonna get these marks that feel very forced. If you hold your tools lightly, you can just kind of let the, the surface of the brush or the pencil or whatever you're working with just move across the page in a way that um, is a little more sensitive. Just a little bit of creative here. Okay, so I'm just gonna starting to add a couple more dark details in. I think my toe is gonna need one more touch up later with a little bit of black ink, but I'm gonna set this piece aside for the time being. And come to another one to show you a kind of a different way to start with a sketch. Okay, so this is in a different art journal. This is one I've been playing with for a little while. I've been posting this on Mix. Some of you have seen, some of you have seen some pages from this on Instagram. Um, this was the view from uh, the table on the studio desk this weekend with my art journal right here on the table, a bowl of water that used to belong to my dog that I fill up for the birds, the other chair, um, the planking on the studio deck, and then looking beyond there to the trees. And I did this with a brown watercolor brush pen and just kind of captured some quick details. Um, and then what I added here, and this is the thing to think about, is not just what can I draw, like how can I draw what, what I see, but how can I do a little bit of writing that also captures a little bit of the experience. So I was enjoying eating my lunch and working in my art journal outside, and I was enjoying the feeling of the sun, but it was windier than I would, than I would like. So I wrote windier than I'd like, but the sun feels good. Okay, so for this page, um, I, I kind of thought a couple ways about it. I thought, well, I could add watercolor to this, but knowing that this is a, a water, like a brush pen, um, it would probably move that brown pigment around quite a bit. So I thought it might be interesting to go in first with the Marabou Art Crayons, just with a little bit of color. So back beyond this wire, and a whole bunch of trees and some sky. Let's do a little blue and green back here. Going right over the top of that brown ink. And this is um, the Miss Meteor crayons will kind of seal the ink in a little bit so that I can go back in with some other media and not have the brown move all over the place. I mean, that's a look as well, that's fine. It's just not, I think, what I want to do on this page. So I'm actually going to go over some of it with a white. And what's kind of cool about that is that this is wood along here and it almost gives it that look of white painted wood where the white is skipping over the surface of the paper. I took the art crayons to work last Friday for some of my coworkers to play with, and I noticed they used them all the way down and didn't turn them up. <laughs> Plant here. Again, I'm working fast because I know I want to come back in with some other materials. I don't want to work on it so long that I lose the opportunity to play around. I don't really have a we have a white color for the brown, so we just we know how it is. Take that piece table. Okay. 
So now I can come in with colored pencil and just kind of add a little bit more line work in here. Again, you can see I'm I'm working fast. So think about almost scribbling like motion. And if you're looking at a scene, at a certain point, decide that you're going to look away from it and just look at your art, right? So you're almost looking at the scene that you're drawing with your memory. So a lot of times we think, I've got to look with my eyes. And then you get frustrated because you're having a hard time having that translation between what you see and what your hand is doing. It takes a lot of control and a lot of practice, frankly, to make your hand do exactly what your eye sees. And even then, it's a matter of perception, right? So I find with art journaling, it's a lot more satisfying to, to try instead to kind of aim for what is my experience of this thing? What is my experience? experience of the world that I'm trying to capture here, right? Which is exactly, you know, that, that Paul Clay quote that I put in the prompt for today. Art does not reproduce the visible, rather it makes visible, right? So think about how your journaling of a different place or space or somewhere that you love, that you're making things visible not reproducing what we see. So my next step is going to be to go in with a with a water brush over some of this and I'm going to blend some of the areas and that's going to allow some of this browning to do a little bit of moving. and kind of soften some areas. So the colored pencil will mostly stay put. The mixed media crayons will move around quite a bit. And a little bit of that browning is gonna start to shift. You might let water pool in certain areas and spread it out evenly in others. So even just this little bit is starting to add more depth to this scene, right? It was a pretty simple line drawing before. And now we're starting to see a little bit more of the depth of this space. And I'm really going to put a lot of water on this area where I wrote because I want that to go a little bit more into the background and really foreground the scene itself. Now I'm going to add a little bit of, just a little bit of uncharacteristic color, right? Not natural color. Just to demarcate some of these areas a little bit more. You can see how I let the water pool there in the shadow under the water bowl. It's going to increase that shadow mark a little bit. Just a little bit of black watercolor. So some other things that you might think about when you're doing this practice of capturing an image, documenting a scene, documenting somewhere that you are, is what tools are going to best help me tell the story of this place? And so if it's kind of a hazy day, watercolor might be a good choice. 
very crisp, maybe a very crisp fall day since they're headed into fall. You might want something a little more hard edge. So we talked about this quite a bit in our art journal snag sessions together, but thinking about the voice of the art material. How does it help you tell the story? So I think um, another hint that I'll share about doing this is um, don't get stuck in just one area for too long, kind of move your way back and forth across the page quite a bit. That helps a lot with um, not overworking things and also having a, a balance as you go from one side to another. Okay, this page is pretty saturated and wet, so I'm gonna set it aside for a bit here. And um, I wanted to show you something in the service of what we're gonna do next. I don't think I've shared this page before, but this page is made up of an image that I like from the magazine of these windows and this branch coming across. And then this is actual wood tape, wood veneer tape. Um, this is the back side of some contact paper from my great grandmother's house. Stick this back on a bit here, peels up a little bit. A little art journal reconstructed surgery here. So this is the back side, which is actually um, in French. I love that. And then here's a little tiny bit of a hand. This is the front side. So this was from my great grandmother's house. Well, my grandma, for some reason, had it. It was one of the things I snagged from her. Um, and then I found this. Um, paintbrush dipping into white paint and it, it kind of worked perfectly. So I cut it here so that it would be flush with the line of this. So we're going to play a little bit with this idea of kind of creating a space with um, collage uh, that has architectural detail. And I have uh, two different ways that we'll play with this. We'll start from scratch on one and then I'll show you another one that I have in progress. So uh, this is a art journal snack journal that I put alcohol ink and a couple other inks onto. So that's what you see on the page already. Me down here to get you. I'll, I'll show you a couple of things that I've kind of collected here. Some different things from magazines that had little details that I like. As I'm setting up this new place, I'm thinking a lot about what I want to see in my space. And this one I cut out last night because it reminds me a lot of the window behind me uh, that looks out into a kitchen garden. If you look really closely at this, there's kind of a barn shape here. And the window that I'm looking out from here, if I look up and straight out the window, is this amazing old barn. So I really resonated with this image because it reminded me a lot of the space where I am right now. And then I loved this collection of glass for the cake plate and big jars and bell jars. And I just, I love this so much. <laughs> and I found a couple other cool windows. And the other thing I found that I liked were these. These kind of have a different feel a little bit. So I'm not sure if I'm going to incorporate these in, but I also found this was on the same page with this brick. So these might live on this page that we're creating right now, but I'm not sure. I'm set those aside. Uh, some other things I found. This one has art supplies in it. So that's kind of a fun one. We'll see. It might, it might go on this page. I found some cool wallpaper. Both these kind of the colors of this go really nicely in this book. And I found this one in one of these cabinets. Uh, please note the bird that's hanging from this little cabinet door. So I thought that was kind of a good thing. 
and there's also a rooster up here on the shelf and the top of my kitchen shelves are full of my collection of interesting birds. So this seems just, just right. So now it's a matter of finding a way to combine it, almost like you're making a room. So you kind of think about how you might put this room together. And we've talked about this before, about kind of laying things out and not gluing anything down yet while you're making decisions. If you're working architecturally, you have this opportunity with these different straight lines to kind of fit stuff in. So I see that this is actually exactly the right size to fit into this door. So if I trim it a little bit, I think I can put it right there. If I cut almost looks like right along, right inside that line, it'll be just right. So sometimes when I'm working on a collage, I'm kind of working on a piece of it before I've stuck it down. I haven't stuck this big piece down yet, but this, this definitely needs to go right there. And then looking at both these wallpapers, I just feel like they have to go on here somehow. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit everything on this page that I want, um, because these wallpapers just go so nicely with this existing stuff that I have going on. But I'm not sure where they're gonna fit. I could cut this edge and kind of cut away this light and have a little more room. And I could save this window for later. Another important tip is to not get too attached to your original plan. It's a, kind of a good art journaling practice in general. It's good art practice in general. Don't get too attached. I had a professor in undergrad that told me I was being too precious with my art. And he told me that I had an assignment to make 10 drawings, and then I had to burn them. And it was really hard to do, but it was a really good lesson because it helped me not feel like, oh my gosh, this is the only drawing I'm ever going to make and can't possibly let it go. I like this one though because it has little, there's some books down here if you look closely. Yeah, that's just art, that's just precious. I think I've talked about that professor before. He was the one that always used to tell us, give us a kiss and like give us a hug. We would have to do that to ourselves when we did something really good. <laughs> that was when you knew your, your crit was good was when he told you to give yourself a kiss. So I'm trying to find a way to work this window in without eliminating something. Like I love these polka dot cups. I don't want to lose that, but I don't really care about this little stack of plates. So maybe I could put it, place it in right there. And you've heard me say this before, but all your little bits that you're cutting off, these little edges, save them. So you don't know when you need a little bit of that color that's already in your collage. Just stick in there somewhere. I feel like I ought to make a, make a disclaimer. If you do burn your drawings, like do it safely. My brother's a firefighter, so don't start a fire with your art burning. <laughs> so if I move this all the way down to the bottom, so I, think I, could, I feel like I could just kind of get rid of this edge here.
So I move it all the way down to the bottom. I have quite a bit of room to start slicing some of this fun wallpaper in. So I'm ripping towards myself so that I have the nice white edge. We've talked about this before. You can see on the back side, I had to sacrifice these cool silver crowns in order to work on this page. I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this one in. It's like that, that decision point of like, okay, I'm putting a big piece in now. I'm committing. You will leave a little bit of an edge there, a little bit of that red. And now, turn this one this way and go right up the edge of this. One more little bit here. Hey, Erin, jumping in here real quick. Um, looks amazing. Uh, we are about halfway through class, so I just wanted to oh. throw that out there. Um, and we have a comment um, uh, suggesting some placement here. I'm not sure if you can read the comment. Make it into make it into a folded photo unsecured on the top left side. You can then put stuff on the back as well as the left side of the page. True, so yes. That's something I do pretty often. Cool. It, sometimes it's hard to let go of that stuff. So yeah, figuring out ways and ways to make it open. And I'll actually show that in a different piece I'm going to show you in a bit, where the front and the back are very important. So definitely something to think about. So I don't know, I have all these other things, but I'm feeling like this one is starting to be close. I have a little bit of this thing in here. Sometimes it's fun to look for little tiny details that you can add in. A little this and a little bit of it here. I don't think I want to do too much more to this other than maybe a little bit of mixed media stuff. Just scribbling along the edge of the collage stuff here, it'll fill in that space between the paper of the journal and the paper of the collage. Just help it help the two things fit together a little more. I'm doing it kind of thickly, so I'm going to go back quickly with the color pencil. I'm just scratch into it a little bit. I kind of like the simplicity of this page, I like the little secret bird in here. <laughs> this feels um, just right. 
And I don't know if you can see this in this window, see what's through the window here. There's a little sneak peek of what looks like the Eiffel Tower. And that's actually perfect because we put a little wax paper in here so I can turn the page back. Um, on this page, I thought I could use, uh, this was a postcard that my friend sent me. She actually wrote me the postcard from up at the top of the Eiffel Tower. She went up to the Eiffel Tower. This was a trip she went on and she sent me my very first international mail to my new PO box here in Healdsburg. So I thought it would be really fun to put that into my art journal and kind of mark the occasion. So of course I want to have both sides of this, right? I've got she's a big time animal lover like me. So got the cat here looking at the Eiffel Tower. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of tape. And secure it on this side. I have my card in here. It, I, found, I, I didn't plan this out, but it works really nicely with this. This is the leftovers from some stickers and the outside part. I already used all the stickers in this art journal, but cut that part. Um, and then the other thing that I found that I thought could go well on this page, it's got the red, it's got the Eiffel Tower. Um, this was uh, from a frame that I just put an image in in my new place and noticed. Here again, we have the Eiffel Tower and we have this wonderful vintage car. So I thought that might be, make a nice addition onto this page as well. So right now, what I'm capturing is not an experience that I had, but an experience of a friend. I guess I don't need the five by seven, huh? <laughs> And I taped this in with tape, and now I'm going to put the collage right up to that edge. So it kind of goes over where the tape was and reinforces that part staying stuck on the surface. You get kind of a peek that there's something behind there and the ability to turn that page and look. So then uh, to finish off this page, just go with a little bit of, a little bit more of the Miss Media crayon since that's one of the things we've been playing with in this box. Can you believe it's the end of this box? I can't believe we're getting ready for another season already. And one year of art journal snacks. Right. Pretty exciting. Hey Sarah, in a moment here, is it okay for me to tease the change that's coming in the next box? Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay, cool. So that'll be the next thing I'll show y'all after I do a little more fun scribbling. I, I'm not gonna lie, like these these marabou crayons are gonna keep figuring large in my art journaling practice. I don't know about you all, but I just find it to be such a satisfying way to add lots of color in lots of different ways onto a page and then keep playing. My coworkers really loved them too. Everybody had a lot of fun in the meeting on Friday. I took all of my Marabu mixed media crayons. I took some Tempera paint sticks, I took some other tools that are kind of similar. And I said, all of these things are going to feel like drawing with lipstick. Everyone was into it. <laughs> so I am going to chat with this friend about her trip on Friday. So I'm gonna leave, 
I think I'll leave the squares open and just do a little bit of reflective writing about what she tells me about her fabulous trip. I'm so grateful to have a friend that sends me my first international mail. <laughs> I've never had a PO box before, so it's kind of exciting. I love mail. And it's very fun to go check a PO box. Okay. We'll set that aside. And now I would love to tease for you that our next our journal snack box is going to come with a different journal. And I've gotten to play with one for a little while here. Uh, some of you saw a video that I made this weekend um, in this journal where I was doing a lot of acrylic painting. And it's got own paper. So for some of you that have felt a little bit intimidated by the white page, Next round of Art Journal Snacks, we're going to have a little bit of an advantage, starting with a tone page. The pages are thick. They're really nice and thick. And so this is going to allow us, us to do all sorts of fun things. Um, it, it's got a really great feel to it. It's a sewn spine binding. You can see the sewing here, the stitching here. And let me see if I can find a page that shows where it's so nicely. Um, one of the things that stone binding enables is pigment coming through the stitched part in a really cool way. So, okay, we'll stick with this page right now because the colors that I see right here, these colors that I put down the other day are exactly the colors that I see out my window. So I will give you all a little bit of a view of what I see out my window right now. So this is kind of a fun way to start one of these sketches. Um, if you're going out for the day to draw, maybe you're going to go sit in a cafe or sit in a sidewalk restaurant. It's fun to kind of tone a couple pages, put a little bit of color on the page already so that it's ready to go when you get out into the world. So right out my window, I see a really big walnut tree. And it's kind of gnarled. It's definitely an old tree. And it leans over to one side. And again, I'm going to be switching really quickly back and forth between different materials. Sure, this tree. So if you're counting, we've got acrylic paint on the page to start, a little bit of wax crayon, now some watercolor. Shadow that's inside here. So when you're drawing nature, especially if you're kind of trying to get the colors that are there in the scene. When you're going for the shadow, you, you do want to stay away from black. You know, I used some black in some of the other examples I showed today. Um, I really like to use a little purple to get my shadows. It just ends up looking a lot more real, a lot more natural. Hey, Erin, just want to jump in here. Thank you yeah. for demoing the um, journal that's going to be in the next box. Um, I see a lot of you are excited to try toned paper in an art journaling setting, which is very cool. Um, for those of you who are um, kind of bummed that you're moving to a different format, I totally understand. Um, I will give full disclosure here. Um, we love the um, art journal snacks, um, original sketchbook size. Um, we are working on upgrading it potentially with better paper. Um, and with that, it does take some time to test that paper. So um, just know that this isn't like a definite change for the rest of the life of art journal snacks. Um, the normal size 
well, the, the usual size sketchbook is coming back, but we're trying to make it a little bit better um, for the art journaling experience. So uh, never fear. This is just um, mm -hmm. one box that will have the toned paper. Think of it as kind of changing your workout routine a little bit, right? Instead of doing the same thing over and over, we're going to take a little bit of a breather, do something a little bit different, and then come back to the format that we've been using in a new way. So that's one way to think about it. You can also think about it kind of joining in my way of doing things, which is I always change the shape of my journal every time, my personal art journal. It's always a different shape and size. Because I, I like to change the format that I'm thinking in all the time. Okay. So there's my walnut tree. And then the other thing that I see out my window is a whole row of beautiful grapevines full of purple grapes. And I'm actually smack dab in the middle of two different vineyards. Uh, Kendall Jackson is one of them. And Segesio is the other. And from what I hear from everybody, we are we are just days away from picking season, which I'm sure is going to be a little bit chaotic here. <laughs> and I'll be sad to see the grapes go because they sure are beautiful. Go out in the morning and see the frost down there, or just not the frost, but like the dew. It's pretty beautiful. Okay, I'm going to break my rule here and do a little bit of black here and shadow under the and this is my driveway and my car is right here. I'll leave my car out of the image. It's very dusty. <laughs> so there before we started, someone was out in front washing his car. I don't know if he was allowed to be there doing that, but I don't know. You can <laughs> see by the fact that I'm breaking crayons. I'm pushing pretty hard now because um, I'm working really fast. So this captures kind of a, the feeling of out my window, this new view that I'm getting to know. Someone describes this area as shockingly beautiful. And I definitely agree. And as we we're having the conversation, I realized that fall is coming and it's going to be even more shockingly beautiful. Getting a little closer to now to add a little more definition in somewhere. Another thing to think about when you're drawing a scene is movement. It's kind of windy outside right now because the trees, the leaves are moving all over the place. I was seeing if I had anything here that sure this was the I was looking for it. I feel like behind the tree is the barn, and I, I want to put that in, but I don't really have anything that will work for that. So I might let that page sit where it is for a minute.
got a couple more examples I wanted to show you of ways that you might do this. This is the one I used in the prompt for today. This is drawing where I am sitting right now. Here's that same tree from a different, looking at it from the other angle, right? So here it is looking at it through the window. And here it is looking at it from outside in front of my house. This is the window that I'm looking at right now. I'm sitting right inside that window. <laughs> um, right next door is a uh, big storage area. And this page was kind of about my new place, right? I have this um, paint chip that says landscape and a little bit of writing that I did, um, some lavender, old paintbrush, and this idea of new rituals being somewhere new. So this one is both capturing the landscape with a little sketch, but then also getting some of the feeling of being there. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And this is another example that I wanted to show. I think I showed the beginning of this a really long time ago. This is sitting in a cafe, looking out the window, kind of starting to capture the architecture of the cafe, but then using the architecture as a container for writing. So think about how your lines could be both drawing the space that you're looking at or the space where you're creating, but then can also be containers for your writing or your journaling about your experience. Right? And so this writing was before I moved and before I think, I think this was before I'd figured out that I was gonna move here to this space. Um, so some questioning writing in that one. All right. Is that one a slide? I'm running out of flat, flat surfaces here. Okay. So I would like to come back to the crow and the seagull now. The things have dried a little bit. And we'll start to add just a little bit more detail in. So I'm using the side of a colored pencil to keep it soft. And I'm focusing more on the places where the bricks of the wall come together. But a good tip for drawing architectural details is to not draw the thing itself, but where that thing meets another thing. Sounds kind of funny, but if you look at the edges, it's a little easier to get it right or close. Look at where one thing meets another, where it comes up against something else. Use a flat colored pencil and get a little more detail back into my program here. This pro friend who always meets me on this wall. This one's really funny because he comes walking towards me on this wall when he sees me coming. And he kind of has this strutting walk. And he waits for me to put things down for him. But then when I see him elsewhere, if you start here walking around this side and then you walk on the outside of the island. And when I see him elsewhere, he'll see me throw, start to throw a peanut and he kind of backs up and opens his beak like he's expecting me to throw it right into his beak. And every so often it bounces once and he catches it and he almost seems like very proud of himself. Again, I know I'm anthropomorphizing, but I hang out with these guys quite a bit. So gotten to know a bit about their personalities and body language. So see how these just a few little details start to make me come alive a little bit more. Just a few little details back in.
you want to be careful not to lose those original lines. Because again, like I said, a lot of times those original lines really captured more of the theme. We messed with that foot too much so I barely got that part. I'm just gonna do a little bit of edging in here to make the edge of this wall. Sometimes you can think about drawing like this, like almost like you're carving. Like you're kind of carving something away rather than an additive process of drawing, especially with your dark colors. And this isn't a, a class in atmospheric perspective per se, but another thing to think of if you're drawing a scene is that the things closer to you will be more saturated than the things that are further away. Loving what happened here with the watercolor bleeding a little bit. So now I have a little bit of a decision I can make about how much I want to, I, I kind of really like the way this background is right now and I don't want to mess with it too much. I feel like I could start to go in and draw a little bit more of the dock in, but I am really liking the, the way that this is capturing the way it feels to be there in the morning. The sun's not quite all the way up yet. The day hasn't quite started yet. It started for the crow and the seagulls and me, <laughs> but not for everybody else. So I kind of like this being just a little bit misty and things starting to come into focus with my little crow and seagull friend. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more color in here down on the rock. Little bit more color. I don't want to mess with this page too much more. So I think we'll let this one be. And maybe I'll post it later on Mix and post the photo that I took that this is falling out from. And if you've been working from a photo, it would be fun to see your photos too. Not to compare it as about like. Did you get it accurately? But rather to, to look at it and see, like, oh, I see where you were inspired. Okay. So at this point, I'd love to invite some people to share if they're comfortable doing so. I see a hand already. That's great. All right. Shelly, um, I see your virtual hand is raised. Feel free to turn your camera on and unmute, and I will spotlight you. Hi everybody. So um, this is my happy place. One of them. I know it's a little. It's, uh, how do I get keep it from being blurry? Right. There you go. Hold so it but, close to your face. Hold it close to my face. My yeah, face is blurry. Blur there we go. Okay. There you go. So there we go. Oh, blurred it again. There we go. Right there. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see with this camera, but I'll put it on mix when it's done. So um, so this is uh the Port Aransas. <laughs> One of the only piers in Port Aransas, those of you who are in Texas, if you ever make it down there. And it has this really cool little area right here where the sea, there's this little blue square. Um, yeah, this is so hard to see, but uh, that it's just been been nice to get to, to work on something that I didn't have to do as an example for my classroom. So I did this for me, not right. for my students. So I, this is, it, this was nice to come home and, rush home and make art for myself. So thank y'all. 
Okay, wonderful. Glad you were able to join us. And thank you for sharing that. It's a fun perspective to, to look at there. Yeah, great. Awesome. Anybody else want to share what they've made tonight? You can visually raise your hand. You can virtually raise your hand. You can just put your artwork up to the camera. We'll see it. Sometimes I feel like Mondays are like workshop days where everyone is just heads down. Oh, Jean, I see a hand. <laughs> feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and look at your fabulous chair. That is a great view. Wonderful. Uh, I'm going to ask to unmute. There we go. See if you got a little notification. Oh no, we still can't hear you. Oh, you can just show us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. Cool. Nice. Lovely. <laughs> Capturing the our journal next <laughs> session with cat. <laughs> Wonderful. Very in the moment drawing. Yes. Love that. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing. Anyone else interested in sharing? We have about 20 minutes left of class. So Erin, if you want to carry on, we can stop again in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Cool. So in the service of this being our last session, I wanted to quickly show you a little bit of this journal. This has been my summer journal. I found this in a, in a catalog. I was excited to put that onto the cover here. Um, also, this just cracked me up. This is from a little like solar fountain that originally I had on the studio desk for the birds on the studio desk, but I brought it here and I'm going to make like a little outside water area and hopefully attract some little birds. But this little weather thing just cracked me up. Like here's strong sunlight, this weak sunlight, and this is in the shade. And I love how in the shade is also thunder and lightning. That just cracked me up. So that was what I did for the cover. And I wanted to show you all that I just have these last two pages in my summer art journal snacks journal. So I thought this last live session would be a good time to just finish those off or get them close to finishing off. And since I still have this little doodad, um, this kind of feels like a last page to me. So I'm going to tuck this one back here. And the other things that I have here, um, this was a funny ephemera moment um, when my family was here helping me move. They went to a very well-known um, wine country deli and got sandwiches for themselves and came back here, eat them. And I was looking at them like, oh, wait, don't throw that paper away, right? Like, give me the paper that doesn't have sandwich juice on it because I definitely need to put those bunnies into my art journal. <laughs> So this was the little bit of paper that I was able to salvage that didn't have um, food on it. Those of you that remember the article I wrote about Candy Jernigan know that she would probably just put the food, like the onion and the mustard and whatever else into the art journal. I'm a little, I'll put tea and coffee into my journal, but that's a, and maybe beets. I'll, I'll stay in pages with beets, but I'm not so much into like, food in my journal. Uh, evidence of the food packaging, yes. Smears of the food itself, maybe not. But I love, love, love this paper with these bunnies. And wondering if some of these other things that I've got, this is kind of nice with it. And the other things I've cut out. Um, just a thing to know about that deli wrap paper is that it is waxed on the back, so it might peel up a little bit. So it's just something to watch. So I'm just seeing, I've got this little bit of extra here. So I've got one more little bunny there. We will just cut this one out. I 
some more little bunny on the page. Place it together a little bit so he's got his little back paws. All right, so <laughs> I wasn't thinking about this when I was saving it for this, for the kind of the end of the journal, but it is kind of how the end of summer has felt to me, like bunnies running in all directions. Moving is hard. <laughs> and it's a very busy time. So I kind of feel like this bunny running in every direction all at once. And I don't know about you all, but when when I feel that way, working in my art journal for a while can help to just calm me down a little bit, mellow out, mellow out some of that wild bunny. Something else I have down here. I've got this is a really cool paper. It's I don't know if you can see it. It's almost flopped. But I thought I could take just a little bit of this. And maybe this will become something I'll I'll do. I'll write a couple of words. Enough to cover too many little bunnies. I'll have to think about it a little bit, what I want to write about. Actually, I know exactly what's right. Um, my boss and friend in this new endeavor that I'm in are in a phase now with the work that we're doing, that we're moving from frenzy into joy. And I love that. And I think that those words, frenzy into joy, should go here. So once this page cures a little bit, I'll stick those down. So now, even though it's a little wet, I think it's going to be okay. We're going to flip to this last page. This is like, I almost feel like I want um, like a drum roll sound effect. <laughs> if we were super fancy, we could say, Sarah, in post, add a drum roll to this final page. <laughs> or maybe someone will come up with a, a way to play that for, you, for yourself when you're working on your last page in your journal. I'm happy to just tap on my desk if you'd like. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how in-depth Lee goes when he um, edits the videos to put on. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you could do that, but hopefully that was good enough. <laughs> Did you even hear that? Imagine drum rolls. <laughs> Amazing. We have about oh, like 12 minutes left yeah. of class. So yeah. you do your thing. So what I was thinking with these lights that kind of dark and I was thinking it's like having it's like what what are these lights looking at how did that come down and maybe what I'll do is go in with like some gray or white paint and do that other area but since 
we're all together right now, I'll come back to that part. I'm going to show you what I do when I end a journal is I date it. And I'm committing. I'm going to finish this one today. So today is. Every day. And date in there. And again, probably what I'll do is stick this down a little better, come in with some gray paint back in here. So we have these two little odds and ends I cut off from that other page that I might put in here. And some yellows in where the light comes down. And I think that'll be my plan for this page. So hopefully you are coming to a close with your art journal. And I'd love to come back to you now and give anyone else a chance to share if you'd like, or if you have another page in your journal that you just really want to share and tell us about, we'd love to hear about it in our little last little bit here. Feel free to virtually raise your hand or physically. No pressure. You know that we love seeing a photo or a scan of your artwork on mix when it's ready. I used to do that a lot. I used to scan in my artwork because I felt like it looked better than taking a photo of a spread. Erin, what do you usually do? You just do photos? I usually do photos, yeah. Um, I used to scan them, but um, that was when my scanner was not like underneath my desk, kind of a whole rigmarole. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, usually I photograph them. It's, sometimes it's a little tricky with magazine pages to get the not get the glare. So I try to have light sources from several several directions. Like you can see this in the where the light is hitting that. Right. It's another reason I love the super matte medium is it takes down the gloss on magazine pages. I, I always forget that when it's hot, you burn through glue stick a whole lot faster. That glue stick I was using is like almost empty now because <laughs> it's coming on really thick because it's so hot in here today. I actually do have air conditioning in this new place. I've just never had air conditioning somewhere I've lived before, so I don't think about it. Yeah, I see the comment in the chat about remembering to date things. I really, really recommend even just the practice of, of dating your journal at the beginning. So somewhere on here. Um, and then dating it at the end. Let's see it in the other one. Here it is. Um, so this one. I started on August 2nd and finished on the last day of August. So I don't always do like a formal start date, end date, but I usually do have the date start and end. So uh, the cover of this one, yeah. So it's, um, I stitched on it a little bit and collage. This is a little bit of the map of Samra. This was from, um, the edge of a mailing envelope, which is a tear here to open. And I thought that was such a cool thing to put on the edge of an art journal when it's stitched on in the house. Summer in our handy spot on the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, best view, this is the most important view. So I can do a full stack of them here. Look at this one, this one's getting really thick. I love this view. It's so fun. <laughs> like my favorite thing in the whole world someday i might make myself like custom wallpaper that's just an image of just like the edge of art journals like this look at that 
Ah, makes me so happy. <laughs> uh, maybe I should like take pictures and then have fabric printed on spoon flour and then just wear the edges of journals, like stripes, the better. Love that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hilarious. At the end of the season, maybe we can all paste our art journal side boot views. <laughs> that is the best way to describe the edge of the sketchbook is side For boot. Her, view. That is what it is. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it's side boob. Um, yes. Hey, you're going in my art journal. Side boob, art journal. Love that. Um, and I will actually mention here I think it was Jill who took advantage of this. Um, mm -hmm. If you are not super into the toned paper that's going to be coming in the next uh, Art Journal Snacks box, we do have some of the original um, Art Journal Snacks sketchbooks um, in the Art Snack shop right now. Uh, we're just, we're selling them in there because we want to make a better sketchbook. So if you want to grab those, you absolutely can. And this month is paper fest. So you get 40% off when you use the code paper fest 2023. Um, I will add, let me add the link again. I'll put it in the chat. And one other thing that you might think about if you want to take advantage of Paper Fest and you're excited about the new toned journal, you might think about getting some of the lighter weight white paper so that if you want a white page in your art journal, you can tip some of that other paper in. So everyone can take advantage of Paper Fest. Lots of good things that you can mix in. I'm just checking the inventory. Oh, we have plenty in inventory. So let me drop this in the chat so you can stock up if you'd like um, and then you get 40% off when you use paper fest 2023 I realize this recorded live stream will not age very well so <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're watching this and it's not September 2023 I'm sorry <laughs> um, but yeah you can stock up on those Yes. So I just want to show them side by side just so people can get a sense. They are this relatively the same size. They're pretty close in size. It's just the orientation is a little bit different, right? This is the edge here. So it opens up long. Um, they're about the same size. So if you're disappointed because it's been a good size um, kind of travel wise for you, they're they're pretty similar. So they'll stack nicely on your bookshelf and you'll actually get a little journal side boob from one, depending on how you put them on your shelf. So, um, that's my new favorite term. Excellent job, Dana. I'm going to be quoting you all the time. Did I add the stitching? Yes, I added the stitching with my sewing machine. Yeah. I got to try that. I have a sewing machine too, and I never think to put paper on a sewing machine for obvious yeah. reasons <laughs> not obvious to me I'm always like what can I sew what else can I sew with my sewing machine my sewing machine sometimes sews fabric but most of the time it sews weird things <laughs> we have about three minutes left anybody else feels like sharing um, and again it doesn't have to be what you just worked on today, if you have a page that you're really proud of that you want to share. Um, the next box is coming out in a couple of weeks. So oh, we want to reminisce over what we've made in the last quarter. And should we give them the heads up on when the next ephemera hour is? Oh, that is a great idea. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Aaron and I love collecting ephemera for our, our journals. Um, so usually around the end of the season, we'll do a little ephemera hour review on YouTube, um, where we just chat basically about cool ephemera that we found and what we want to use it for. Um, so the next ephemera hour, again, it's on the art snacks, 
Art Snacks YouTube page. Um, that is Wednesday, September 27th. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, we record it, obviously. So if you don't catch it live, you can catch it recorded. Totally fine. Um, and then the next box is shipping out the first week of October. So stay tuned for that. Ooh, ooh, I see hand raised. Catherine, um, I'm going to spotlight you. Feel free to unmute yourself and show your camera. Something you want to share? Okay, did that work? We yeah. can't yeah. see you, but we can hear you. Okay. Uh, it's okay. Take your time. Try to figure out. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Um. Oh. Oh, that's the mic. I want video. Okay. Oh no, we you're still unmuted, but we can't see you. I know. I'm sorry. I'm trying to. I don't know how to. I don't know how to get this to wait. Light turned on. I thought maybe. Um, Catherine, while you work on that, I am going to call on Shelly, who um yeah. has something to show us. <laughs> Look what. <laughs> oh, did that arrive during the live stream? Yes, <laughs> I just checked. It said you have a package, so I was like, "Yes!" <laughs> Woo <-hoo>! <laughs> yeah, the ink collection is out and about. Amazing timing. Thanks for sharing, <laughs> Catherine. How's it going? Okay, I'm just gonna use my face cam instead. The other one. So, like sticky notes, I put over because this page is my nephew, and like it's about my nephew. And um, I know his mom doesn't like want his face being shown online and stuff. So I put little sticky notes over his face. But I really proud of this page. Um. Uh. So it's got a bunch of photos of him. And then, like, these little things are actually, like, temporary tattoos that I use, that I put um, on the, on my notebook instead of my skin. And then this is just, like, another small little book that my, uh, my friend gave me a long time ago and I put in there. <laughs> so fun. Oh, my gosh. Can you, can you say that phrase to everyone again that's on there? Oh, it's, I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. Mm. It's from a song I liked as, uh, you know, uh, when I was younger. And um, my parents got me like a book that like had the lyrics and uh, like other stuff in it about the song. And so I like cut it and used it as ephemera for this page about my nephew. I love that for sharing that worth the wait to figure the camera out thank you for for <laughs> you're welcome what a beautiful what a beautiful quote to kind of end this live stream with too i hope you never lose your sense of wonder and um this topic that we looked at today is is all about that right it's kind of looking around you with a sense of wonder and capturing it in your art journal in some creative way so i hope you all never lose your sense of wonder and continue creating pages with us so fun to hang out with you all today thank you for joining me in healdsburg um if any of you are ever up here and want to go draw in the vineyards let me know you can do a little uh vineyard drawing <laughs> sign me up <laughs> Hey. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us live. Um, we appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Um, and Aaron, thank you for your time as well. Uh, again, this is being recorded. So the recording will be dropped on the Art Journal Snacks Mix Group 
probably tomorrow. So be on the lookout for an email or a little notification. All right, everyone. Oh, with live stream creation so that we can see them. Oh yeah, we wanna see what you made. Make sure you post. See you all in the next box. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, bye.